I'm Kathleen Staten, and I am the manager of Music Constructed, and I am so happy to be here tonight presenting Kelsey Shireman, who's going to tell us all about how to set your classroom up for success. There are so many pieces to that, and sometimes you just need to hear some other ideas or other perspectives. Oftentimes, us music teachers are a department of one, and that's just how it goes. You know, we're a special, and it's sometimes hard to say, hey, PE, hey, art, hey, all these other departments, let's join together. And so tonight, tonight is about really celebrating how we as music educators can come together and sort of set each other up for success. So Kelsey, thank you so much for sharing 30 minutes tonight with us about how to do this. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're going to do for us tonight. All right, thanks for having me. I'm so excited y'all are here. Uh, I'm Kelsey Sharman Hilton. Some of you know me, Kelsey Sharman, then I got married, so I'm Kelsey Hilton too. Um, and I am the pre-K through fourth grade music specialist at Silver Nagel Elementary in Dickinson, Texas. And we're just going to go hop right into it. Let me share my screen real fast. And we're going to rock and roll. And Miss Kathleen's going to send all of this stuff to y'all. So if you have any questions, you need to go back and refer to something, you are more than welcome to take anything I have and go for it or send me an email or questions or anything. And That's put right. information yeah, in the chat. Can I just say, feel free to put any questions in the chat and I will share those with Kelsey and she'll address them. And then also at the end of tonight, you'll get an email with this video and all of her resources so you can make the most of your time tonight, including a uh, certificate that will validate your PD time this evening. Hi. So I have a lot of slides, but I'm gonna go through them fast. So if there's something that you miss, just tell me to chill, okay? Um, so. The kind of what we're talking about is new teachers and new to this school teachers. There's a lot of things between this is your brand new school or this is your first year ever teaching ever in your whole life. There's lots of fun things that you kind of don't think about that we want to kind of think through before the kids actually show up. Some of you might already have kids. Some of you might start this week or some of you might be lucky and have a couple more weeks before the rest of us have to go back. But um, so I kind of want to go through some questions for you to think through, uh, show you how I've set up my classroom in the last couple of years, and, and just kind of give you some ideas, take them as you will, tweak them, steal them, whatever you want. Um, so like I said, I teach in Texas, I'm on the south side of Houston, I'm also the art teacher and choir director at Fanfare Lutheran Music Academy. So I'm really into organization, not only keeping my classroom organized, but all of my other side things that I do and everything organized. So you'll see that when you see the pictures of my classroom because it's a little OCD, but it's okay. Um, any of my Kansas people, I'm a proud graduate of Kansas State and see my Willie Wildcat right there. All right, so new teachers, this is my eighth year in education, um, my sixth year in elementary, and there's lots of things that you might not think of right off the top of your head. Um, so the first thing, I know y'all can read, but get to know your administrators, your secretaries, your technology people, and your custodians. You're going to learn the kids' names. You're going to learn the other teachers' names. It's going to be fine, but make sure you know those people. Know where the staff bathroom is, because don't be using the kids' bathroom. Icky nasty. Know where you're supposed to park, and know where the copier is and how to use it. And if you break it, know who you're supposed to talk to, because don't try to fix it yourself. You'll get in trouble. Um, find a mentor. A lot of districts set up a mentorship program. They'll kind of help you so you don't have to run to your principal all the time and be like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do? Because they'll be like, I'll figure it out. So get yourself a mentor. Reach out to your fine arts director. We're lucky in Texas. We have fine arts directors that help us. So if our principals don't know, our fine arts director will. Um, but nobody has it all figured out. I've taught for quite a few years and I still learn stuff new every day. I do things wrong. It's okay but it's all about the kids, remember that. You'll realize it more when you actually get to see the children. So as far as back to school, I am part of two different teams. So I have my school team, which is art, computer, and PE. Love them to death, they're all fabulous. This is a picture of me and my art teacher. She dresses as an elf for my um, choir performance at the uh, administration building, she's fabulous. Um, so make sure you get together with your team, know when your programs are, know when any special events are, if PE has a presentation or art has an art show or whatever, kind of work together. 
and make sure you work well with each other. We're very lucky. I've worked on teams that didn't work very well together. So kind of work on that and see how y'all can collaborate together and do what's best for kids. Cause you all teach the fun subjects. And if you're not having fun, they're not having fun. So we wanna have fun. Um, as far as your school goes, make sure you know when your PLCs are. We have this thing called Power CTT. Um, do you have a mentor director for fine arts? Oh, sorry. Just popped up. I'm like, what's happening? I um, the poll. <laughs> <laughs> um, make sure you know when your duty schedules are. Uh, I am very, very lucky to not have lunch duty at this school. Hallelujah. Um, but I do have car duty and that switches and I have to know when that is compared to my concerts and compared to my choir rehearsals and things like that. So organization is important. If you're where you're supposed to be, then you're already halfway there. So that's a good thing. I know I'm talking really fast. I got a lot. <laughs> so okay. back to school. Everybody probably has their first day of school picture. This was me last year. So make sure you know what your primary curriculum is. We just got together and wrote our curriculum. So we have a new curriculum this year and supplemental. Uh, we have Quaver as a supplemental. So we had to make sure we knew how to use Quaver. Um, district scope and sequence. That's another thing we got together and wrote because otherwise it was every man for himself before. So I've been taking time to organize what's that going to look like in my class with the classes that I have, with the time that I have. Um, I also have a budget. I'm very lucky to have that. So I put together a wish list and our fine arts directors like it needs to be done these days, blah, blah, blah. So I have that all in my calendar. My calendar is very important. I think. If I ever lose my calendar, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be bad. Uh, make sure you have an inventory of your current items. So we were very lucky. We just got all new instruments for all of our elementary schools. Um, and before that, you kind of have to ration your money and say, well, I need to save this much money because I need to buy a xylophone, blah, 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 blah. But um, now that we have those instruments, I need to know what we have, what their condition is, and how they're going to depreciate over time. Um, so those are all very important things to keep track of because you're not just the music teacher. You're the budget person. You're the scheduling person. You're the pep rally person. You're all this stuff. You guys know that. Um, school or district performance expectations. I started an elementary choir. They have to perform. I mean, that's what you have a choir for. Or we have grade level programs. Or we have all of these other, oblig not obligations, but opportunities to perform. Before school, um, if you have an open house, like we have meet the teacher tomorrow, I have to be there for that. Um, I usually put out an introduction letter. We put on Schoology, because um, then we don't have to make 900 copies of everything that I write. Um, technology, put it out on Schoology, put it out on your, your school's website, your Facebook, whatever they need to know about music class, make sure the parents know. And I would suggest doing it in hard copy and in technology however that looks for y'all, just so everybody knows what's going on in your classroom. And then the first week of school. So after you think of all of that stuff, then you have kids in your room. You're like, whoa, I love teaching. Kids are the best. So the first week of school, try to know which teacher is which. Um, sometimes this is very apparent because they'll come up and say, hey, I'm Miss So-and-so. And sometimes they're so frazzled that they don't know their own name. So you'll get it figured out, it'll be okay. They'll show up when they're supposed to most of the time. Um, know your schedule, know your procedures and your expectations. There's probably some kind of, like we're a restorative practice district. So we have certain things. We have to have a treatment agreement. We have to have a get to know you circle. These are all things that are built in. So instead of me trying to think of all of these new ways for us to get to know each other and all this stuff, like we kind of just, you know, copy and paste, which is nice. And then we, the kids already know what to do and we jump right into it, which is nice. So, but give yourself grace the first week of school. You're gonna be tired. You wanna go home and lay on the ground. I can totally understand that. First couple of weeks, probably go home and lay on the ground. Um, Long-term planning, I know I'm going fast, but this is all in the handout, I promise. So if you're like, I don't know what she's saying, she's talking too fast, it's all in the handout, I promise. Um, what elements are required? Are you required to post your lesson plans? Are you required to post your standards? Are you required to have X, Y, Z um, for your evaluation? All of that kind of stuff. We're just getting into TPS in our district. Um, so there's certain things you have to have on your lesson plans for that. Every, really every school, every district, every state is different for that. So make sure you know what you're supposed to be doing. 
Do you know how to use your curriculum? Who do you turn your lesson plans into? I've worked at schools where I didn't have to turn in lesson plans. And now I work in schools where I have to turn in my lesson plans and who needs to see them and who needs to have access to them? When are they due? All this stuff, all just about lesson plans. You know, this tiny bit of this huge thing that you have to do as a teacher. Use a planner. If you take nothing else away from this whole session tonight, use a planner. Your life will be much easier, I promise. Personal organization, so it's not just at school. Okay, you might be a hot mess, but you can still be organized like me. I'm a hot mess, but I'm organized. I have a plan for if I'm gonna eat, because if I don't eat, then I'm very mean. And children don't wanna be around a mean teacher that's hangry. Lay out your outfits, make sure you wear jeans on the right day, or you wear your school shirt on the right day or whatever. Elementary especially, you got to be dressing all cute for certain days. Uh, make sure your technology is charged. If you're a laptop person, make sure you have a charger for that laptop. Make sure your car has gas. That's always good information. And make sure you drink water. That's another thing for me. I'm not very nice if I don't drink my water. And schedule your days off in your doctor's appointment. I'm not saying you need to take your days off, but take your days off. I've been in this long enough that if I need know that I'm not going to be good for my kids, I'm just going to take the day. I'll come back and everything will be much better. Professional organization. Okay, so I just had to recertify. I moved from Kansas to Texas. I guess it's been six years. So I had to recertify this year. I also had to change my name. I'm glad it all came at the same time because they were going to come find me. So my name is different than what was on my original certificate. I had to do my summer hours in Texas. You have to do a certain number of, of summer PD credits, all that kind of stuff. Then you have to actually prove that you went and did those. Um, I did my first steps training in, um, oh my gosh, totally forgot where I went. Colorado, Grand Junction. There we go. Did my first steps training in Grand Junction. So I had to make sure I had that. I did an online training with World Music Pedagogy. I had to get all that stuff turned into my district so that they knew I actually did what I was supposed to. And then if you're a Texan, TMEA memberships expired. So make sure you re-up to your professional memberships, all that kind of stuff. A lot to think about, isn't it? And school's coming soon. So this is the, the quick part. Wait, there we go. Here are pictures of my classroom. So I kind of have this year and last year, kind of both, so that you can see what my COVID-ish plans were and my non-COVID-ish plans were. Um, I'm very much a paper person, so I'm big into having binders. I do bag everything up on Google Drive, um, but I want to have the paper. Anything I've ever seen at TMEA, Kansas MEA, any of that, I file it away. You know, I may or may not ever see it again, but it's filed and it looks nice. So figure out a way that works best for you in organizing documents. So this is what I do. Everything is color coded. Um, I have all of my binders. I have a song anthology. Those of you that are Kodai people um, would be super proud of me. I have a whole thing for choir. I have all planning documents. And then I have all of my books and everything here. And then, of course, everything has to be in rainbow order. Then if you go into communication, kind of goes along with paperwork. If you use Remind, you use Schoology, you use whatever your school uses, make sure you know how to use it and how to use it appropriately. If you need to make email lists, yes, it's tedious, but if you're like me, we use Skyward as a grade book. I didn't, you know, I might have 50 kids in my choir. I don't want to send an email to all 300 or whatever we have of our third and fourth graders. I just need to make a list of my choir kids. Um, I always try to have paper notes, not only to send home to the kids, but also to put in the front office. So if so-and-so's mom calls and says, when, what time's Johnny supposed to have a concert? The front office doesn't say, oh, we have a concert? We have choir? I've never heard of that before. So make sure your front office knows what's going on. Contact your parents. They'll be excited to hear from you. And make sure you have the right permission slips. You guys know that because you're fabulous. Classroom setup. There's lots of things to think about, especially now that where I'm at anyway, they're like, we're back to normal, business as usual. So is your room inviting? Do the kids know that it's a music room? 
Is there music stuff on the walls? Or is it we walk in and it's a jungle? They're like, oh, I didn't know we had jungle class. Make sure it looks like a music room. Do the kids feel good in your room? Where are they going to line up? Are they going to get to sit next to their friends? Or are you going to put a, a place of where they're supposed to sit? Make sure you have seating charts. We're big into safety right now. That's been a huge thing, obviously, in Texas. We have to have seating charts. We have to have lineup lists. We have all of this stuff ready to go. Not only does that help for the safety side, but it helps you learn the kids' names. The kids know exactly what you're expecting of them, all of that. You have an off-limits area. I don't let the kids go on a stage when I'm not there. My stage is attached to my classroom. You know, y'all you, don't go over there until I tell you to, and they know that. Um, what are your expectations for the instruments? That's a big one, especially I have a very small room and we just got all these new instruments and it's kind of like busting at the seams. Very good problem to have. Um, but do the kids get to just run into your classroom, and start banging on two bonos? No, they need to know that though, because that's what I would do if I was a wild child. I go over there and start banging on stuff. But you got to teach the procedure. Teach Kelsey, the expectation. Yes, Kelsey, what's the procedure that you use to teach your kids about that? Because I think this is a really prescient issue for all of us. You know, we have these great designs, like we've got, we have assets. Thankfully, most of us have something in our classrooms. But how do you take the time to say, okay, kids, step one, step two, step three, what do you do with those two bonos that look so fun to play? Oh my gosh, I know, right? So, Here's my, okay, pretend you're a kindergartner and you're coming into my room for the very first time. You've never seen music, never done anything before in your whole life, okay? So I have the kids line up outside my room and I get them all popped. Hopefully they're in a straight line. Who knows? First day, who knows? It might happen. We might get lucky. So I tell them who I am. We're outside the music room. I say, oh, we're going to get to go into music and there's all this really cool stuff. And I'm like, you have really cool stuff at your house? They're like, yes, miss. They call me miss because they don't know my name. And... Like, there's going to be all this cool stuff, but I don't go to your house and just start banging on your stuff, do I? And they're like, no, we would never, except for the ones that are crying, you know, they're not with you. But if you have the magic, it's fine. And they're like, oh, yeah, miss. And I'm like, okay, guys, because these are all of my toys, and I'm going to share my toys with you. Now, of course, you're not going to say that to fourth graders. They're going to be like, who are you? Get away. But explain to these kids that they're really special toys and they're brand new, and what would happen if I broke one of your toys? Would you be sad? They'd be like, oh yeah, miss, we'd be so sad. And you'd be like, well, I'd be sad if you break anything of mine. So then we walk into my classroom, and I have dots on the floor. I'll show you that in a minute. And they sit on a colored dot. I used to have them numbered, not doing that this year. We'll see how that works out. But they sit with a color, and everything's color-coded so that whatever color they sit on, it's going to be their dance group and their game group. And if you want templates for that, email me anyway so they'll come in and sit down and I tell them how to sit I'm like you have some options of how to sit because I don't want you picking your legs straight out because I'll trip and then I don't know where the hospital is y'all be really embarrassed because you can't drive cars and so then I go around the classroom while they're sitting and we have a tour that's the first thing we do go over to tour because that's all they care about they don't care about you they don't care about what we're going to learn they go oh, drums there's xylophones and there's drums and there's all these crazy things. Show them, show them how it's played properly and then jump right into the instrument playing, jump right into the dancing so that they can experience it. Because you can talk about it all day long, but until they actually get to do an elbow swing when you dance or they actually get to hit a drum, they're going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. So explain it, explain how to do it wrong and then explain how to do it right. That's my big thing. I very rarely have classroom management problems um, because I'm silly with, obviously, you know, I don't talk to people like this, but I talk to kids like that was probably really creepy. I apologize, but explain it to the kids. Just like, you know, I won't come to your, your house and break your stuff. I wouldn't come over and smack you in the face. Why are you smacking Joey in the face? You know, Kelsey, I think that's actually a really important thing. You know, you sort of glossed over it. Like, oh, yeah, we I don't have these problems. But the reality is, like, a lot of us do have these problems. And so if you can bring it down to if you were in my house, if I was in your house, I think that personalizes it. Yes, definitely. And I say even when we have, like, centers and we do puppets and all this kind of stuff, it was like we have a beanie baby thing for 
beat buddies and all that. Like, but when we do Beanie Babies, like, oh, that's your baby. Give your baby a name. And of course, the little kids are all in Beanie Babies. And I was like, well, do do babies fight? They're like, oh, no, miss. Babies would never fight. Like, then why are you pushing the babies into each other? Why are you licking the baby? That doesn't make any sense. So when you kind of say, would you do that in real life? They're like, well, no, we wouldn't. I was like, you did just do that. You just licked that Beanie Baby. You wouldn't go and lick somebody else. So that that's how I get a lot around a lot of my potential issues. Also, I know what's going to happen. I didn't when I first started, though. I learned all of this. Like, why are you licking the Beanie Baby? Never would have thought that, that was a real thing. And there, now I am six years in. Yes, there I do. is no class for when your children lick your manipulatives in yes. college. <laughs> That is exactly right. <laughs> so new teachers, bless y'all, because they're going to lick your stuff. <coughs> so anyway, <laughs> just to scare you, but they will. We yep, love children. They they're the greatest. Sherry, I love that you <coughs> unmuted yourself and you're laughing along with us. Because wow. I'm sorry, there are a lot of people on this call and we all know that our stuff has been licked. I mean, that's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have great immune systems. Thank you, children. So the same thing goes into the transitions. Like, how are they going to enter your room? If you let them come in like a stampede of wild elephants, that's how they're going to come in all the time. That might work for some people, but that would make me crazy. You know, 26 kindergartners coming at me. No, thank you. I have expensive things. I'm worth a lot. You know, I don't want to be dead on the ground because kindergartners took me over. Like, the kids on recess. Have you ever seen that show? A little kindergartner. Hey, you know, that's how I feel sometimes. Um, how do you pass out instruments? Do you let the kids carry the xylophones or do you bring it to them? Do you talk to about how, how to hold the mallets? Do you make sure that, you know, how do they leave? What do you put the things back? Do they put the things back? There's lots of different ways that you need to explain how you want it done. And once you do it the first couple of weeks, it's cool. They'll be like, oh, no, we don't touch the xylophones. And then when you get a new kid, you don't even really have to say anything because little Timmy, who listens to everything you say, he'll say, oh, no, new kid, we do not touch the drums. So that helps a lot. I'm going to quickly go through some pictures. Um, so this was my last year classroom. Um, I did make sure these were spaced out on the, on the floor, a very small room. Um, but we still have a great time. So I, they were numbered last year. This year, they're not going to be numbered. I have make sure everything is organized and color coded. These are my boom whacker Glock and spiels. The kids know they all have a number on them. The number that's on their dot is going to be the number of instruments they get. So if Johnny's on number six and number six xylophone has a problem, the kids are going to report it to me and oh, Johnny, guess what you did? You messed up my xylophone. We're going to take call mom and dad. Um, I like having big uh, visuals, so I made a giant xylophone. When we do recorder, I have a giant recorder. It's about five feet tall. Just It's just hot glue on the wall. Um, nothing too crazy, but the kids can see it. Yes, I have a projector and all that, but for some reason, leaving it on the wall helps them a lot. Um, I try to keep everything color-coded as much as possible. Always got to rep my school. This is from this year. I got a new puppetry and couple new visuals and things like that. Um, you guys can read that. Where'd you get all that stuff? I went from having a very um, covered up room as far as rainbow, like in the target bins. And then I went to things that I could actually see through. There's a random cat. I apologize. Um, but if I, I, if I don't see it, I can't use it. I have all this really cool stuff. So I, I did switch over to clear bins the last couple of years. And I even put my instruments in them. Uh, we have, you know, we live in South Texas. Water happens, bugs happen and things like that. So make sure they have lids. It helps a lot. Um, when we don't have lids, I use crates. Another way I can see through everything, make sure I know what I have, what I need to replace. Um, shoe caddies for boom whackers are fantastic. I also use them for my ribbons. And then when I don't want it to look all messy, I just pull down my screen and it covers it up. Highly suggest if you have that ability. I mean, we've gotten tons of new instruments and think there's my recorder over here. Um, so making sure that there's a place for everything really helps out. They're not usually here on the floor, but there's just an example of when we do play instruments, they have a parking spot that has a number. Those are just little um, 
not vinyl, but little plasticky things. Kelsey, what I hear you saying is that the most important thing, especially for younger students, is that there is a routine and a place and an expectation for things. And with my experience as a music educator, whether it's international schools or public schools, it doesn't matter. The most important thing you can do is to train your students to know what comes next and that those expectations are key to success later on. Like I'm, I'm watching you flip through these slides and you have so much organization and like we talk about those things and we have these uh, goals for that, but I don't think we fully uh, understand how important that is to convey to our students. And yes. I think we gloss over um, how much time we should spend doing that. Like, it's so easy to be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah line up. Oh yeah, 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 come into the room, but don't touch the drums because what we really care about is group drumming or African drumming or, you know, uh, uh, improvisation or, or composition. But really what's important is routine. Yes. And a lot of the, um, especially on the instrument side of things, is if you don't make the instrument such a novelty, like, oh, we're going to play the drums once this year. They're like, okay, cool. Make it kind of old hat. Like, we're going to play a little drum today. We might sing a little bit. We might dance a little bit. We might go back to this instrument and make it just, that's part of music. And they'll figure out that, oh, well, if I don't figure out how to use this instrument and I don't use it right, I don't get to play it. And it's not just, oh, I don't use it for that one time that whole year. It's like, well, I want to play the castanets. I want to play the xylophone. Like, come on, guys, you got to do it right, you know? Right. Um, and and so, so setting students up for success with routine yeah. is yes. key. Another thing that helps is a visual schedule. Um, I have a really nice one that I got off of Teachers Pay Teachers. I should have put it all out so y'all could see it. But then it kind of shows the kids, hey, we're getting ready to play instruments. We're getting ready to do a dance. We're getting ready to do something. I better act right so that I can play it right. You know, I want to do fun things. And I see that that little, little carrot right there. And that carrot is really important for neurodivergent learners as well. Yes. Students who need to see what's happening next, they can gauge their behavior and their stamina on, okay, well, if I can just hold myself for an, a minute longer than next comes. Yes, definitely. And here, I mean, we're a dual language campus, so that kind of helps having that picture for some of my Spanish speakers, especially the young, young ones that are kind of doing both languages at the same time. It's like, I know what a drum is. I might not be able to read it, but I know kind of know what's happening. I'm lucky that we have bilingual paras that kind of translate and stuff for me. That helps a lot too. So it's not just, you know, it, it helps everybody. Multiple means of representation, if you'd like. Uh, what does what's, what's the book that you have there that's got the uh, this one? Yeah, what is that? Mm -hmm. Um, it's called Color Ring. It's a boom whacker. I think it's actually for bells. You can get it at West. Um, but everything's color coded. And then color I bought ring color like ring, ring on your finger. Like, ring ring, yeah. A ring yeah, color okay. dash ring fabulous. It's boom whacker colors, it's bell colors, and then I got little stickers that are boom whacker and bell colors and put them on my xylophones. I also have the boom whacker um, glockenspiels and then all the other manipulatives. It's, it's wonderful and fantastic. And I wrote a whole grant about rainbow stuff and highly recommend if you have any questions, please holler at me because I love to talk about it all day long. Actually, Worked Kelsey, times, the boom whackers. would you please share with us the links to that and to the other things that you have yes, implemented so that we can share them out with all of you who have attended that we can say, hey, this is what she was talking about. <laughs> yes, I think, I don't know if I can go back. It's in the, there's an actual thing that says, where did you get that? Um, it's if it's, I didn't get it from West, then I got it from uh, Music in Motion or um, Premier Teaching Aids. But I, I can definitely put all that together for y'all. Don't let me forget that, Miss Kathy. Ab absolutely. Well, <laughs> we are actually at the half hour mark. So I would like to thank all of you for attending tonight for ideas for how to set up your classroom for success. Kelsey has put together an amazing set of resources and slides and things like that, which you'll get just for showing up tonight and also for signing up for the session. If you have any questions that you'd like to address to her directly, please take yourself off mute and say hi or put them in chat. We'll take five minutes of questions. Go ahead, Sharice. 
oh, I'm saying hi. Hey. I want to say thank you for, um, you know, sharing all this uh, wisdom. Um, and I've actually been a music teacher for, for 11 years, but I'm starting in a new school. So I sort of, and I had a year off. So I sort of feel like it's a fresh start. And um, something I always struggled with was boom whackers. I see that you use them a lot. I love them, but I didn't always know how to use them well with the kids. And I just wonder if you have any recommendations or certain books or programs that you found really make them a little more user-friendly. And um, yeah, because I've even I got books, but I just never found a way to really make it work so well. Yeah, definitely. So I, I would like to use boom whackers more than I actually do. And I think mm -hmm. now that we're kind of getting out of COVID, it's going to help. Yeah. Um, but that's one of those that I'm very much like, do not bang this onto another boom whacker. Cause then they'll bend. Right. I don't right. want them to bang them as hard as I can on the floor. Cause then they'll bend. Um, so I make sure they hit it on their hand or hit it on their leg. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have any books for boom whackers specifically. Um, but YouTube, there's three or four channels. And if you shoot me an email, I'll send you everything I got. Um, but musication has good ones and it's not just boom whackers. If you have bells, you have color glockenspiels, you have desk bells, all that stuff. Uh, musication is fabulous. Uh, Kim Miles. Yes. Sarasota, is, Florida. Just like Google boom whacker karaoke. There yes. are so many great from star Wars to holidays, to simple melodies, like Pirates of the Caribbean is yes. the winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> yes. How do There's you go an... about it? Like, do you put a big uh, map on the board with the colors and then they go through it? Or do you use your screen? I use my screen. So it's kind of, you know, like karaoke where the words are on there or you have a little bouncing ball. Mm -hmm. works the same way and it it some of it's folk songs some of it's popular stuff like at the end of the year we did a lot of stuff with Encanto songs and it wasn't necessarily just the melody sometimes there was some harmony stuff in there sometimes there was some adding some drums or some sticks uh chords are awesome um and quaver create, now do you create these songs for them on the like like the whole work like you've made this beautiful slideshow for us or do you find those songs somewhere and then help 100 percent stolen from youtube i do not know how to do that <laughs> okay okay but shoot me an email and i'll link uh my you not my, yeah my youtube channel that's not my youtube channel but my youtube playlist of everything that i use because okay. yeah don't don't recreate the wheel because some people that's all they do and it's like fantastic and amazing and that is not my skill set but yeah right. shoot me an email there's yeah. lots of really cool ones yeah, I, I, I love that you guys have invited us to this and I want to let some other people speak, but um, thank you for, for your inspiration. You're very welcome. Your classroom thank is you. amazing. Your classroom Thanks. is amazing. And if y'all want anything, please send me an email. This is like my favorite thing is to talk to teachers. So if you have a question about something I didn't even talk about, I am more than happy to, to help you out. As much and, as I can. and this is what this is all about, right? Kelsey, thank you so much for embodying this. This is all about reach out to Kelsey. We'll send you her Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. Reach out to her, ask her questions. Like, don't be a department of one, be in community with other people. And so we're so glad that you're not trying to reinvent the wheel or pilot solo tonight and that you joined us. And uh, we'll share all of that information with you. And thank you so much for coming tonight.